Sorry I haven't made a YouTube video in a while, but I've been kind of busy lately. But someone requested me to make a video about the different dialects in German. So I was going to give you guys a brief overview of the different dialects that exist in the German language. Es gibt sechs große Dialekte. Friesisch, Niederdeutsch oder Plattdeutsch, uh, Mitteldeutsch, Fränkisch, Alemannisch, Bayerisch, Österreichisch. Um, those are just kind of like the major, six major dialects. And they all have kind of like subgroups or whatever. Like, for instance, Swabian is a Bavarian dialect. Like, there's sub-dialects of those six major ones. That's just kind of like a general term. And... Frisian, or Friesisch, is spoken in the north part of Germany. And it's by Denmark. And... It also is in part of modern Holland and north of Bremen and the Frisian Islands, obviously. Um, Niederdeutsch or Plattdeutsch, which is what we call Low German in English, is mostly spoken in kind of like the northern chunk of Germany. Let's see if I can show you a map. Here, so it'll make more sense. Let's see. Um, I don't know if you can see that very well, but Low German or Platt Deutsch is this kind of right there. Um, Frisian, I don't know, you probably can hardly hardly see it. I'll give you guys a link to this picture. Frisian is the purple parts, which is very kind of small. And then, let's see, what else do we got here? This list. Um, we have Mitteldeutsch, or in English, Middle German. And Middle German is kind of this area, you know, basically the middle of Germany. If that makes sense, you know. And it's, I mean, literally kind of like in between Low German and High German. Um, it, it also covers like Luxembourgish, I guess linguistically. It's considered a dialect of German but it's also considered a different language than German. I don't know why, but it kind of falls into both, I guess you could say. And it's also spoken in Silesia, uh, Schlesien, I think that's what it is in German. So in parts of Poland, it's still spoken. And then um, you have Frankish, or Frankish in English. <laughs> Um, it's spoken along the main river, um, and also kind of by the Rhine, too. Um, I'll just give you guys a link to that picture, and then you can tell, like, where these dialects are spoken. And then you have Bavarian, Austrian, German, and, uh... Bavarian and Austrian German are pretty similar because I mean they've from like a language point of view I guess that kind of area of German speakers has always been like united throughout history or you know always like communicating with each other throughout history so they're pretty similar I, mean, I talked to some guys from Austria 
on Chat Roulette a couple days ago, and I mean, their German, their accent was not very different from my family's, which is Bavarian. It sounded pretty similar. It says, uh, because the Bavarian Austrian region was more unified politically for over a thousand years, it also it is also more linguistically uniform than the German North. There are some subdivisions, but the differences are not very significant. So that those would be the major um, like German dialects. Like Alemanish, that's what's spoken in Switzerland. And even in Freiburg too, and Karlsruhe. Uh, let's see. So that's that's kind of like uh, the Swiss German is falls into that category. Um, but you can't be confused too, cause like uh, there's lots of dialects in German like that. Most of them are not like uh, mutually intelligible. Kind of like with Chinese, they have lots of dialects too, and they most of them can't understand each other. Same goes with German. I mean, for us Americans, it's harder to imagine because English speakers haven't been in America for very long. We all can communicate very easily. We have lots more mass communication, I guess. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of dialects where they cannot communicate. So they all, you know, there's a standard German. It's it's called Hochdeutsch in German we just call it standard German and don't get Hochdeutsch confused with uh, like high German that's different but they say Hochdeutsch for standard German and really it's not even a spoken language like from a linguistic point of view I guess it started out as a written language Martin Luther who started Lutheranism or whatever he uh, wrote the first Bible in German and that was the first standardization of the German language. He wanted to reach out to as many German speakers as possible. So Hochdeutsch, standard German, has always been a written language but in the major cities of German-speaking countries um, they speak Hochdeutsch but they all have their own distinct strong accent along with it so, I mean, where you, wherever you go, you'll probably run into Hochdeutsch, and that's what all their news, a lot of their newspapers and, uh, like, television is usually all in standard German, all the movies and stuff, and most music, too. But, I mean, there are, are some uh, regional, like, writers that write in their own dialects and musicians that write songs in their own dialects and whatnot. And, but most of it's standard German, and that's what they would use to communicate if they traveled to other parts of Germany with other, you know, dialects. Um, so that's as far as German goes, and I'll give you guys more links in the description box if you want to read more into it. Um, I've thought about learning, you know, a German dialect, like Swabian. That, that's the one that interests me most, is Swabian. I think it sounds cool. But, yeah, basically, standard German is a written language. You'll encounter it but it'll be with a lot of different um, accents that you'll have to get used to because if you go to like Switzerland or if you go to Austria Bavaria northern part of Germany you know I mean all the different places you're gonna go you're gonna run into different accents you're gonna have Berlin accent Hamburg accent the Cologne accent you're gonna have the Munich accent I mean they're all gonna be different but they're all speaking Hochdeutsch, just with different accents. And that's just one thing you got to pay attention to: is it's not a spoken language; it's a written language. Um, if you do plan on visiting Germany or living in Germany, it would be nice to learn some of the, some phrases or something in the local dialect wherever you go, because it'll be real helpful. And I mean, that's what they're going to use in everyday speech there. They don't, like I said, only really use Hochdeutsch for like they want to reach out to the whole country or if they're visiting other parts 
of the country or other German-speaking areas. So it would be nice to know a dialect.